before I get in the way of anything. No, you can bail over, brother. Yeah, bail over. Yeah. Can you want to hear me better? Yeah. yeah. Okay, firstly, it is a high honor to be here. Yeah. To be able to stand and say and do something for the Lord is a privilege that a lot of people don't get. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes with a lot of responsibility. Yeah. yeah. So I've been thankful for that opportunity yeah. for this invite. Amen. Right. Bless you, Lord. Uh, whenever we got here, I noticed, I didn't realize how many people that came here that I knew or knew my family. Yeah. And it's always nice to run into people you know. But yeah. more importantly, it's always good to be with your brothers and sisters yeah. in Christ. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm a lot closer to them than I am some of my own family right. that aren't walking with the Lord or right. not saved. That's yeah. true. So, yeah. uh, by way of introduction, my name is Aaron McMahon, for those who don't know me. And this is my wife, Teresa. And the little one, Destiny. Amen. And uh, they've been very good in uh, supporting our ministry. Amen. And if it wasn't for Teresa, well, there wouldn't be a, a ministry. Because she's the, she's the one that got it oh, open. Oh, my. that good? Praise the Lord. Yeah. The scriptures say if you uh, find a good wife, you find favor with the Lord. Right? Yeah. And I have. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I say that to say, uh, kind of, this is a little out of the way, but if there's any young men here yeah. that are single, stay away from the women. And go find your godly woman and pray for her. Yeah. 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 Take my word for it. You're going to yeah. pray. Right. You're on the mark, bro. And if there's any young women here, stay away from the boys. They're playing. Yeah. Yeah. Pray for a godly Come man. You know what they're all for. Amen. So, by profession, I'm a police officer. I work for the town of Bonnor. This is my 14th year. Amen. And how police work, uh, how a department will work, is you have your patrolman that goes out and about and they report crimes or incidents that happen. Yeah. And then they'll take that information and they'll return it back to the head. And then the chief will then decide what resources are used to squash whatever problems. You want to hear me reference my job a lot during this because I pull from that all. Yeah. That's what I'm doing with you spiritually. Uh, whenever I go out and I witness to people, one on one, I don't have a personal work, I'm not a preacher. But I hear everything that people tell me, and you'd be amazed at how similar they are. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. What did I have to do? Is that my call? Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this information and bringing it to you, the local churches, to tell you what I'm hearing out there and to better equip you to learn how to witness to these people right. and encourage you to go do it. Yeah. Because if if you got one reporting back to you what's going on, you can be more apt to, to do yeah. your part. Yeah. That's good. Okay. There is a way to properly witness to somebody. Uh, some things that I hear out there are, uh, well, I've said a prayer. I've asked for forgiveness. I've been baptized. I've been to church all my life. You yeah. name it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that ain't going to cut it. No. So before I springboard into this message, I want to ask you a question. It's kind of a trick question. And don't show hands or no, don't say anything. And don't let the question deceive you. But is there anybody here that would consider themselves good enough to go to heaven? And throughout the course of this talk, I want you to think about that question. Okay? I'm going to be using this booklet a lot, but it's by no means to take the place of the Bible. The Bible is the authority. I'm not. But these are my notes. Amen. Right. Yeah, that's right. So when you see me reading this, I'm not reading out of a serious catalog, giving you what's in it. Yeah. It's, it's very scriptural. Okay? So right. I just wanted you to, to know that. Okay. Imagine, if you will, for your for imagery, that you're walking down a sidewalk someplace and you come across a man that's collapsed on the ground. He's turning blue. He's not breathing. So somebody calls out to you and says, help, help. And so you run over there and you look at the guy and they're like, do you know CPR? Can you help? And you think back and you said, well, I was invited to a CPR class once, but I didn't go. So I don't know how to perform that. So you just stand there and you watch the guy's life slip away. And die when perhaps you could have helped the guy. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't prepared. But the same way when you're witnessing to people, the scriptures say that before we're born again of God's Spirit, we are dead and trespasses and sins. Right. So when you go through your day to day at work, go to the park, go to the flea market, wherever you be, you're going to come face to face with people that are dead. Right. Yeah. And if you don't know how to perform CPR, yeah. they'll die one day yeah. and they'll end up in hell. It is our job to tell them how not to go there. Because right. we know if you're saved. Yeah. And so it's our responsibility to tell them. And it's our responsibility to tell them correctly. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we put together this little template of how to do that. CPR. And what that means is our, it's our job to create conversations. 
See, yeah. it's your job to go to them. They're not going to jump in your lap. It yeah. is rare for somebody to come to you and ask you yeah. how to be saved, unless the Lord's been dealing with them and they know yeah. who they can go to. But usually it's you that goes. Right. Right. Uh, P, it's our job to present the moral law to people yeah. to bring about the knowledge of sin. Paul says the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Uh, yeah. That's not done away with. Uh, but it's not subjected under it. Yeah. Okay. So it's our job to present the law and then present the gospel of grace. Yeah. yeah. Correctly. Yeah. And lastly, repentance. Yeah. And there's a big debate within Christian circles of what is repentance. But it means change your mind about trusting in your self righteousness. Yeah. And yeah. trust in the finished work of the cross. Yeah. Right. All right. That's repentance. Yeah. I'm going to go over that with you. Okay. Right. Good. I left a stack of these books by the doors. Everybody goes out and grab you one. Amen. If there's enough left over, grab two. Amen. And maybe it will be of use to you. So now we're not going to let this guy slip away from us that's on the sidewalk. We're not going to let these people that are in our lives die and go to hell because we could have said something and didn't know how or what and will. We're going to learn how and be equipped to do it. Yeah. Amen. Okay. But before we get into talking about serving the Lord, it's important. The most important thing is your fellowship. If you're not in good fellowship with the Lord, then you might want to sit down and work on that first. Because yeah. you usually don't use people that's out here dabbling around everything else. Uh, yeah. So yeah. check yourself, as they uh, say, before you wreck yourself. But make yeah. sure you're right as far as fellowship goes. Yeah. Yeah. And then pray about opportunities to do something for them. Uh, specifically tonight, witnessing to people. Uh, pray for those opportunities. But yeah. Don't forget the fellowship. We can serve when the cows come home, but if you don't have a relationship, yeah. something's off there. The Lord yeah. created us to love us. And so we'd love him in return. Yeah. Yeah. He can get the work done without us. He's just gracious enough to let us have a part in it. Right. Right. Not only does he save us by his grace, he will reward you when you get to heaven by the work you put in. Yeah. Right. So, Amen. Praise the Lord. So don't forget your fellowship. That's very important. And praying about these opportunities right. is very important. Uh, I often, before I go on a shift, I often pray for an opportunity. If there's anybody I run into that's hard, their hearts have been prepared, let me run into them. I'll, if nobody else wants to go, I'll talk to them. Amen. And he's blessed that. He's honored that. He's given me a lot of fruit. <laughs> I'm nothing special. But I'm just telling you what what he's blessed for me, and maybe it'll do the same for you. Amen. It's not complicated. Right. You know? So remember that CPR, because that's the template we're going to use. Yeah. In your Bibles, if you want to, and if you will, go to the, let's say, John chapter 4. Jesus gave us two templates to use. You've probably read them all of your life and maybe not extracted this out of it, I'm going to tell you. But Jesus was the master soul winner. Yes. He knew what he was doing, and we could glean a lot of stuff from reading about his one-on-one -on -one encounter. Right. And when he right. went to win somebody, it was one-on-one -on -one a lot of times. Yeah. When you hear him preaching, it's a, to a lot of people about, you need to repent. Yeah. But that one-on-one, -on -one, right. see, that's... Yeah, uh, there's something about that. So John chapter 4. Oh, let's put in there about... Let's see. Verse 7. Is everybody there? Yeah. I'll read it aloud. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Oh, uh, no. Wait, wait, let's back up. I'm sorry. Go back to verse 6. Right. Now, Jacob, so well, what I'm saying, no, I didn't need it. I'll get it here in a minute. Now, let's just go with, uh, start with verse 6. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. It was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Now, right there, let's stop for a moment. Jesus went to the well out of his way. Yeah. For an encounter. So when we think of soul winning and we think of witnessing, you're going to have to go out of your way mm -hmm. to find these opportunities. Mm -hmm. Where people, where can I go? See, I go to the flea market every other Saturday. I go out of my way to meet the woman at the well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. See, anybody who wants to go with me, by the way, come with me. Right. For his disciples were going away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask his drink of me? which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now right there, Jesus was having a natural conversation with somebody. Just what, what two people would meet and would talk about. How's your kids? How's your wife? How are you doing? Natural things. We have those every day. But then he trans transitions from a natural conversation. 
into a spiritual conversation. Because he's trying to get a horse by the bridle and lead her to the water. Which we know the gift that he has for us is spiritual. Yeah. So you're not going to deal with anybody in a natural conversation. You're just going to talk about your opinions. Yeah. Yeah. But here's where he gets spiritual. He says, now, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Does anybody in here have that living water? Yeah. Did you find yourself thirsty <laughs> one day? Yeah. yeah. So when you're out here witnessing, what do, what do we use that would make somebody thirsty and see their need? Oh, salt. Oh, love. Because if you don't know you're if you don't know you're dead in trespasses and trespasses, yeah. how would you know you needed yeah. CPR? Yeah, no, you are. Right. Yeah, that's good. So the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? So her mind is in the natural. Yeah. She's not been regenerated. She don't understand spiritual things. She's thinking about the water. Yeah. Art thou greater than the father, our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drink thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh this, this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up in everlasting life. Okay? So there you have how Jesus began a natural conversation and he began to transition to the spiritual, to let us hear a spiritual need. Did you see how he's going? Yeah. So right here, as we continue, where was I here? Fifteen. Fifteen. Now watch what he does. And the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Yeah. And Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. And the woman answered and says, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And in that sense, thou truly. So what did he do with her? He took her straight to the law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yeah. She's had five husbands, and the man she's living with now or with is fornication. Yeah. So he used the law to, to show her the knowledge of her sin and her thirst. Uh, what about that? So when we're out witnessing the people, things like, well, come to church. That's good. That's not a witnessing kill. Things like ask Jesus into your heart. That's nice. And maybe he'll use what he's got, but that's not how he did it. That, that ain't gonna get it. Right. So these are the things that we use as Christians, but that's not witness. Yeah. So we gotta we gotta throw that out the window. Yeah. Let's see. So I see how he's appealing to the law here. And in our method, that's what we're gonna do. I'll show you that when we get to it. And the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men are to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship no what that you know what not. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know the Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is coming, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee, are in he. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked to the woman. And on and on we go. Let me, uh, let me get on down to the, the bottom of this thing. Does anybody recall what the woman of the well did when she said, You are him. You are the Messiah. Do you remember her response? Did she drop her? Uh, she water. dropped that natural water pot. Yeah. Because she got the spiritual water, and she made straight way to the city yeah. to tell people, "Is this not the Messiah? He knew everything that I did." Yeah. So her response then was, "She repented and believed that the Messiah had come." Yeah. Now that's not our gospel today. So our gospel is not the Messiah has come. Paul gives us our gospel, and that's Jesus died and was buried and rose again, yeah. according to the scriptures, and it's by grace through faith you're saved. Right. But you can take that template with somebody and take them right to the Savior. Okay? So I don't know if you've ever noticed that in the woman at the well, but that was a, one of the best of examples of how to witness this about it. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to comment on another one, the rich young ruler. Yeah. And that one's a shorter version. But do you recall, he ran up to the Jesus and says, Master, what good things must I do yeah. 
to inherit eternal life. And Jesus says, okay, we'll follow the Ten Commandments. Follow the law, you know them. He says, I've done all that. So if you talk to somebody that says, I'm good enough to go to heaven, what would you call that person? Self-righteous. Self-righteous. So Jesus says, okay. So he, he used the law to go in a little deeper. And he says, I see that you have a lot of possessions. Sell what you have and give it to the poor. You'll have treasures in heaven. Yeah. And come follow me. And his response was, uh, no, sir. And he walked away sorrowful. Yeah. But do you see, the law was used both times. Yeah. And you had two different outcomes. What about that? See? Some people won't repent and believe, and some people will. That's good. That's okay. Good. So in your own time, when you get time, study those two stories and, and see if you can see what Jesus was doing. Now, to get away from the scriptures a moment into some, uh, some real encounters that I've had using that same method, maybe it could help bring them home. Amen. Let's start with C. CPR, right? Let's start with C, and that's conversation. With a little interaction from everybody, can you think of some opportunities that you have in your own life where you can go and create a conversation with someone who you don't suspect is saved? In the back of this book, there's a list with a bunch of lines on it. Get you a copy. And when you get home tonight, write down by name, who are these people? Just write them down. That's your objective. And then using the book and the scriptures and whatnot, then you can take a good, clear gospel presentation to them. So without a goal, then, you're just, you're just learning. But I'm trying to get people to, to go. Yeah. See? So can anybody think of opportunities or would like to share just real briefly about some uh, opportunity you've had of how you would create a conversation with someone with in mind to uh, witness to them? When I'm at work, back in 2008, before Obama, uh, Barack Obama, Hussein, or whatever, took office. Thing was, things were fine between the general public and the police. But after about 2008, it began to be some turbulence. Yeah. People started to distrust yeah. the police. Yeah. Some rightly so, some not. Some was just propaganda. And I thought back then, okay, I'm out here arresting these people for their drugs and their whatever, but the recidiv recidivism rate is so high, that's repeat offenders. If you're not giving them the other half of the solution, Okay, so we just keep arresting them. They need to be saved. Right? Yeah. And get in a, so what I've, I've studied out some things, and I figured, well, how am I going to talk to these people legally? And I could use my job as a platform to witness to them. And I discovered as long as two people are willing to engage in a conversation that's consensual, I can talk about whatever I want to. And I do. <laughs> but now I understand at your workplace, a lot of times they'll shut you down. So you may have to find somewhere else to go and talk to them. Like the flea market, yard sales, name it, right? So when I'm, when I'm out talking to these people, I'll ask them, what do you think about an afterlife? What's your worldview? And I hear what they have to say. People say they're atheists and they're agnostics and they're Hindus and they're Buddhists. Y'all don't know, for the most part, don't know what they believe. Yeah. And that's okay. It doesn't matter. Because what does Jesus do? Take them straight to the law, to the heart of the matter. Yeah. If for, the, for the sake of time, I'll expedite this thing, but I'd like to show you what a witness encounter might look like using a demonstration if Teresa would be willing. Okay. She was a little bashful, but this is just an idea to get your mind going, to yeah. get your mind on it. This is yeah. not the end all be all. You help us, bro. Bless me. Can everybody see her well? So this this is a scenario. This is a lady that I just met at the flea market. And I just handed her a trap. Have you ever seen one of those? I've uh, seen one at the Walmart. Back. Well, that's a gospel track, and it tells you how you can know you're going to heaven when you die. Okay. What do you think about an afterlife? What's your worldview? Uh, yeah. I wasn't raised in church, or I was baptized, though. So, I mean, that's. Okay, so is it safe to say you're just not sure? I think I'm a pretty good person, though. Okay. Yeah. Let's find out. And my church that I went to as a kid told me if I'm baptized, we get to go to heaven. Fair enough. Well, let's find out how good you are. You ready? Okay. I'll give you a thought experiment. If you're able to keep the Ten Commandments as a whole, you would be righteous. You would qualify to go to heaven. Okay. But if you break them, guess what? You're in debt to the law. You're unrighteous. So let's see how, how good you do. Okay. In your whole lifetime, have you ever told a lie? Yes. Okay. Have you ever stolen anything? Yes. Okay. Have you
have you ever looked at another with lust in a way you shouldn't? Yeah. Well, you've heard that Jesus comes along and he says, hey, if you've even looked at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery within your heart. That's a high standard, right? Have you ever murdered anybody? No. Well, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> but have you ever been so angry at somebody that you cut them down with your words? Oh, yeah. Have you had somebody do that to you? Yeah. You know what they did to you according to that standard? They murdered you. But you did it to them, so we're all without blood on our hands. So where I'm going with this is this. Do you know what capital punishment means? Mm -hmm. That's where the judge sent it to somebody to death for their crime. Mm -hmm. We're going to die one day because God has sentenced us to death for our crimes. Mm -hmm. So if you were to die and God was to judge you by that law, would you either be innocent or guilty? Well, I'm innocent because I've asked for forgiveness and I've been baptized. Well, let's try that in a court of law. Here's your scenario. What's your name? Three. Okay. You said, hey, say, Judge, okay, you got me. I brought the bank and shot the guard, but uh, you got me. I'm guilty, but will you forgive me? What is he going to tell you? No. Yeah, so what? Because the judge's job is not to just give you forgiveness because you asked. His job is to make sure justice is satisfied. So it's time or a payment. That's the only things that satisfy justice. So would you be innocent or guilty? What about my baptism? <clears throat> I'd be like saying, hey, Judge, you've got me. I brought the bank and chopped the car, but I did something to make up for it. He'd say, it doesn't matter what you did. We're here to judge you on the crime that you've committed. So then would you be innocent or guilty? Guilty. So if you're found guilty in God's court, so to speak, would that be heaven or hell? What? I don't believe in hell. <laughs> but I don't believe in hell. Well, we have to have an authority on which to stand. That's the Bible. That's how God's chosen to talk to us. And he don't go back and forth with us and beg us to believe what he's saying. But he declares there to be a hell. So it's up to you whether you believe it or not. I tell you that there is. So if yeah, there was a hell, would you go to heaven or hell? I guess I'd go to hell. And do you see why? Yeah, I guess I'm guilty. So if you're found guilty, God's going to do what's right and send you to hell. Does that concern you whatsoever? Yeah. It should, because this is your life we're talking about. You're a soul for whom God loves, and I don't, I don't even have to know you to care about you, and I don't want you to go there either. So then what did God do so we don't have to go to hell, do you know? I don't know. Well, that's what you're missing. I'm going to explain it to you. So according to the scriptures, God, who is a spirit, entered into his creation as a man like me and you, Jesus Christ. And he wrote a check for you in his blood to pay for those sins you've committed. Right before he died, he said, it is finished. It's paid in full. So on the onset, you said you were good enough to go to heaven. But he says he died for you because you're not, and what he did is finished. And you can't have both. Right? Now, according to the scriptures, he said he was buried, he rose again from the dead, and is alive now in heaven. All he asks you to do to find eternal life is to repent of trusting in those good works and that baptism and any other thing you can do and trust the honor in his finished work. And lastly, he says, all I will call upon his name shall be saved. And that it's a free gift from you by God about anything you can do to earth. Right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So at that point, a lot of times people would say, okay, let's say a prayer and you're in. <coughs> Perhaps. Yeah. But you've got to be careful with that. I'm going to tell you why. Thanks. I'm going to tell you why. A lady that I know, and I've done all of my life, just three days ago, posted on the Facebook. She says, I went to church all of my life. <coughs> And I was not saved. I had a Sunday school class. I sang in the choir. And I remember seeing this woman at the altar all the time. And she said, I did not know that I, because I went to the altar when I was 12 and I asked for forgiveness. And then since then, I had to convince myself that everything was going to be okay because I did the thing. And it was until she, it wasn't until she, and went to church her whole life in a little church like ours. And it wasn't until she was 57, she heard that it's not by anything you do that saves you. It is trusting in his finished work. Yeah. And she never got it. And when I heard that, that really addled me because she sat in the church house just like this one for years and years and years, and nobody knew it. Yeah. See? So I hope this is short and sweet. It don't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be long. Yeah. Does everybody kind of get the gist of whenever I'm out talking to people, this is what I do? And some people get saved on the spot. I just know it. 
you can just tell often when life comes into somebody. Yeah. And then a lot of people don't. But my job is not to count how many people get saved in this much yours. Our job is just to tell. Because even if they don't get saved on the spot, that's a seed planted that somebody else may have to come along and yeah. till up some more, throw some water on. Right? Yeah. So that's not our department, as long as you're willing to go tell them. If anybody has any questions about this, would like to go with us to see us do one-on-one -on -one street work at Carmel or down here to the flea market. You have my contact information. Reach out to me. Let's line something up and go. Yeah. And all it really takes is one person willing to go that can really put a dent in some things. But can you imagine if each one of us said in our mind, I'm going to witness, and you've got to treat it like a business. I'm going to witness to X amount of people this week because I can. Yeah. It's a reasonable service. Yeah. Be business-like. Right. If it's one person, set to it. And then you go around and you look for that one opportunity every week, or five or ten, or however many you can do. And that's between you and the Lord. But in closing with you, I've noticed that about nine out of ten people that I do some personal work with and just detailed over is not saved. I'm not trying to burn the world down. I'm not even trying to save the world. I think that the revivals are over. We're down to the gleanings. We want to get yeah. saved here. We want to yeah. get saved there. But as long as we can snatch him up and get him on the lifeboat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Teresa's reminded me. I've had a witness encounter with a Baptist preacher. And he, he was a young guy, but he was had a pulpit. He was a Baptist preacher. And he said, I was said the prayer, was baptized, tried to live right, this, that, other, had a congregation. I sat him down with the scriptures. And Paul's gospel, and he said, I just don't believe that. He didn't believe it was a free gift. He believed you had to do this and that and this and that. He was a Baptist Catholic. But he had a church. So things aren't what they appear. Right. So do you remember at the onset of this conversation, I asked you, are you good enough to go to heaven? If you said yes, we need to, we need to talk about that privately. Or you need to reach out to somebody because it's not about anything we do to, right. to get there. And if you recall a time, I think I'd go to heaven because I said that prayer. Yeah, come on man got a problem. Mm -hmm. A prayer can save you when you, if you believe from the heart and you call on the Lord to be saved. Right. But saving the prayer don't save you. And that's a fine line. Yeah. Because if you're trusting in the time you did the thing. And listen, I see on Facebook and probably some of you all have to where churches put on there, we've had 50 souls saved during BBS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Baloney. Mm -hmm. right. And then I run into these kids whenever they stair step up. Yeah. Yeah. I said a prayer. Yeah. 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 And that and next thing will cut it. Right. Now that ain't to say when you're dealing with, you know, I won't get in that territory. You know how to deal with kids. But we got to be careful about ABC, repeat after me. Yeah. yeah. Even out here, we're doing on one on one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Uh, real quick, does anybody have any questions about our ministry or just mm -hmm. soul winning in general? What do you like? Say you think somebody is there on the brink, they took it all in, they realized. They're a sinner on the way to hell. What do you do to, what's your final thing that you would help them to do? So if, if they're willing to admit I'm a sinner, and if that book is so, and I believe the book, I know why I go to hell, and I have a problem. Yeah. If they're at that point, and if the Lord's dealt with their heart about it, yeah. and sometimes I'll ask them, has the Lord spoke to your heart about your standing between you and he? Uh, yeah. So then what I would do is I'd say, okay, and I'd kind of give them that scenario about the courtroom yeah. to help their mind get it. Because a lot of times when you throw out the gospel from the scriptures, it goes over people's heads that are not in church like we are. Yeah. Right. They don't get what born again means, washed in the blood. They don't get these terms. Okay, so then I give them that scenario, but what's important is you give them the scripture. After they understand, yeah. then I open up the Bible and I walk them through really the Romans road. Yeah. And I say, okay, what does it say? You know, and I show them the legal implications of why Christ died for you and how it's a free gift. And I show them the scriptures on it. And I said, all you got to do is receive that gift. I actually got to lead my life to Christ on our first day. Uh -huh. She got saved and didn't ever tell me for months afterwards because she was embarrassed. She didn't know. Oh, yeah. oh, but I, I didn't lead her in a prayer. 
But she said after the fact that she says, oh, thank you for saving me. She didn't know what that was. <coughs> so it's, it, she technically called on God, but she knew when we were sitting on the porch that something happened in here. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Um, if it don't happen in here, then you can sound the prayers you want. Yeah, right, right. Okay, so then I says, the Lord spoke to your heart about it. A lot of times, if he, he is, they don't, they, don't, they don't understand it, but they'll say, yes, I think so. It seems like it. Yeah. I say, okay, well, what do you do when somebody rings your doorbell? Answer. So how do you answer? I say, you believe that he did that for you, and there's not anything you can do to add to that or take away from it, that that is finished. Are you willing to rest in that? Well, that's what it says. Yeah, okay. Then I take them to Romans 10. It says, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I believe that verse. So I give them a template. Yeah. Okay. And I say, in your own words, you may say this. And I tell them, I said, but the prayer don't save you because you did something. Yeah. Do you trust that? <laughs> if you do, then let, I'll pray for you. And then I say a prayer for them. Yeah. And in the silence of the heart, let, let their heart, let them ask to be saved. Yeah. And then I'll go back. And I, this is kind of dangerous territory. But I'll go back and I'll ask them, did the Lord speak to your heart? What's that like? Because oftentimes you'll get the same the same response. I don't understand it. But it's like a weight's off my shoulders. Or that's it's good. Or love or peace or joy or some kind of something that's free. Yeah. So I'm real careful about feelings. Yeah. But a lot of times they'll tell you. Yeah. See? Yeah. So then in my mind, I'll just I keep numbers for myself to keep me disciplined, but I don't keep numbers to go around and tell you. Yeah. Because I don't want anybody to say, yeah. well, look what he does. It's your own personal goal. I, can't, I set a goal, and if they make a profession, I write their name down. Yeah. When we get to heaven, if they're not saved, I'm not, in, I'm not responsible. I can't go in and do God's job. Yeah, right. And we have to remember that when we're witnessing to people that we're not the one saving. Yeah. You can't go in there and, as much as you want them to. Yeah. You just have to tell them and let God sort it out. Yeah. Do you sense a fine line between them saying a prayer and going back like they was, or saying a prayer and actually meaning it and Receiving Christ, making a difference in their life on their part. Yeah, so the judicial act of being saved is one topic. And I rarely talk about the walk as a Christian, unless I'm dealing with somebody that wants to know. Yeah. Normally I run into that when they have issues with eternal security, then what they get mixed up is their walk versus their salvation is free. Yeah. When you get that, you got it. And there, there's some lousy Christians out there, but they're in the family. Right, because they've received the free gift. He says, I'll give you life. But now he didn't say, I'll give you a big inheritance and a reward. Yeah. He says, you're here. Yeah. See? So you've got to, got to get, in, get in there every now and again and explain some further doctrine. But, uh, yeah, emphasizing that the walk with the Lord is a completely different thing. And that takes, like you mentioned earlier, uh, when you begin as a new Christian, you're like a draft. I mean, you just stand up and fall down and you run out and sin and you, you get whipped and it takes a lot. Yeah. But then if you truly do belong to the Lord, see, there'll be something in you that pulls you back. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, brings you back home. Yeah. And he has to teach you, I think, walk, yeah. walk right. Yeah. You know. And then and then you begin to mature and then you can serve him or be a shining light or whatever. But that, that's hard to get out of a new Christian because they want to run back over here yeah. often. Yeah. Uh, and he has to, you know, break out the rod. But, uh, so rarely do I find anybody that makes a profession that I can get to come to church yeah. or I can get to want to, to, to meet me at a later time to learn teach them how to get in the Bible that's rare yeah. I've been to people really get saved but their rate of growth it may be 10 years down the road before he uses them See, do so, you stress the importance of your local assembly do you oh, yeah. mention that I do yeah. I do and uh I think that if you don't have a public assembly, you don't have a head. And the Lord's all about having order and, and, and uh, yeah. so I emphasize to people it's very important for them to get into a local Bible believing church and submit themselves to that. Yeah. And that's hard I said it's hard to get them in there. Yeah. But like and I believe the Lord's in that too because He didn't bless our ministry until so we found us a Bible believing church willingly. As the doors open, we met Wade. He, we were already looking. We we weren't getting fed at our church. I knew something wasn't right, yeah. and I wanted to go where I was getting right doctrine. And the Lord opened up the door, yeah. and I met Wade. He's like, "Well, come over here. We we believe that way." 
So when I got in that church then, then the Lord began to open up opportunities for us to serve. So I don't I don't think he's quite wanting everybody just to run out here and like Buffalo Beetle and just go rogue and no. Because if people if I'm out here witnessing one on one, they'll say, Where do you go to church? Talk to my pastor. Because if you're out there by yourself, you kinda don't have the credibility as if you're plugged into a church. Yeah. And the Lord wants you in fellowship with brothers and sisters. It's a family. Yeah, right. So, so. There's a lot of different facets to that. Yeah. Good. Has anybody in here had opportunities to have these conversations with people? Nobody? Yeah. You have? Yeah. You do door to door? Does your church have an outreach team? We're, we're wanting to start one. We, we've been talking about it, praying about it, and we want to knock on doors. And Good. Praying about maybe getting a bus where we can all load up together and go and do that. That's good. When I'm out here, I always ask people, um, what do you hear about this and that and other? And I just report what they say. I know what church does what. Not, not this one, this is on the other side of the county, but I know who does what. Yeah. Who's getting the work done and who ain't. And the people that aren't really saved, or if they are saved, they're not really doing a lot, you can get. They'll tell you the truth. It's like a little kid. They don't know anybody. They're not going to offend anybody. So they'll just tell you, I don't go to that church because. Now, a lot of that's just immaturity on their part, but there's some truth in it sometimes. Yeah. They know there's something wrong here. Yeah. So, uh, being a part of your church's outreach team is a big deal. To submit yourself, whatever, if they go to the nursing home, sign up if you can. Yeah. If they go to the jail ministry, go. If they go to the flea market, make around, whatever you want to do, be a part of it. But also, sometimes you just have to do things on your own, too. Yeah. Don't be like that. It's not always about a system. Yeah. Because what happens is we get so caught up in systems that we don't really get any work done. Yeah. So I encourage one on one with and that comes from between you and the Lord and your heart. And those that I find are the best. They're not orchestrated, they're just opportunities presented. And as a as a as a the body of Christ, I mean we're we're righteous, we're declared righteous, we're going to heaven. And uh, we, may not, we may not always live right, but we're declared righteous and we, we're secure. But it's in tatters. The body is kind of weak because of the, the Christianity that's moving in, of the, the prosperity gospels and the Pentecostal yeah. movements. That's what America, the lost people look at as Christianity because they're so big. Yeah. Us, most Bible-believing Christians are in, doing small works. Mm-hmm. We're just little pockets here and there. We don't have it. They don't seem like we have a lot of strength. We're not getting a lot done. But I'm convinced if one or two people will just get on fire and go, they can do some damage yeah. to the world yeah. and get people saved. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you got to treat it like a business. It's going to cost you something. Yeah. And the reason that I may I may be as crazy as I am is because when I was saved, I was seven. I said the prayer, but I wasn't saved. I learned that I needed a savior when I was 13. I knew it then that I was saved, but I didn't live it. In my early 20s, I went out in the world and done everything I was not supposed to do just for the sake of doing it. And the Lord had to bring me in. So my zeal doesn't come from uh, being saved. It should. It comes from the prodigal son when I came back home. He took me back in. When even if I was a son, he should have left me out there to die. Die on the sin. But he did. And not only did he bring me back home in fellowship with him, he gave me a wife. Destiny needed a home, and we needed somebody to love. He's given us a church and a ministry. And it's on and on he goes. So there's where the zeal comes from. And I think if you do some soul searching, he's been good to all of us. So somewhere we've got to find some zeal and go, I'm going to go out and witness to people because find it, name it. But ask for the burden, let him show you. Yeah. So, and then go. And in closing with it, just one more point. I've had one person come up to me at random. She didn't come up to me, it was over the phone. I called to order some tracks and stuff. That put me up against the wall and witnessed to me. Pin me down, where are you going when you die? I was thrown aback because it is an aggressive conversation. 
but I really respect that lady and I'm glad for it. And that's the only lady that I could think of that's ever witnessed to me outside of family or church. Or whatever. But for somebody to come up to me whenever I'm out in the street and say, officer, I want to tell you something. Yeah. I'm waiting on the day. I'll jump for joy. But I haven't had anybody come up and be so crazy to tell me how to not go to hell and how I could have eternal life. Yeah. And it hadn't happened yet. So that's to say there's not a lot of Christians out there. Yeah. There's not a lot of foot soldiers. Yeah. So think about it. If we are uh, in the gleanings, you have a farm, you know what gleanings are. Yeah. Well, you got to have people to go there and get them. Yeah. They're foot soldiers. They just go out there and get what's left. Yeah. In the church age, that's where we're at. And we're, 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 the, we're the ones that have to go there and get them. Yeah. That's right. So I, I could over talk the thing. I don't want to do that. But I definitely want to encourage people to go. Um, because those are souls for whom Christ died. Don't let that be in vain. Mm -hmm. Right? Any questions? I'm going to make a comment. So this is scary if you never, like, randomly talk to people. Like, I was not raised in church and all. So when my husband was <coughs> talks to everybody, he's not afraid to talk to people. He's not embarrassed to talk to people. I was a shy person. So to get, I was like, well, he's doing this, and I have a whole family full of lost people that are atheists. A whole family. So I made a list, and I put my notes down, and I wrote my scripture down on a piece of paper, and I called them. And if I got flustered, I just read off the paper. And read off the paper. And sure enough, family member after family member got saved. Nothing I did. But you can, it's okay to be afraid to do this. It's okay to be nervous about it. He'll use you anyway. It doesn't matter if you don't know what you're doing. He will use you if you're willing. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And when you get, sometimes when you witness to people, it's just a conversation. But sometimes it's like the Lord will show up mm -hmm. and you'll know it. Yeah. And he's talking through you. And that gives me more joy or just as much joy as the day I got saved and it never runs out. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes I walk away from an encounter and I'm like, <laughs> you were in that. Right. Yeah. And I'll just glow for hours. Yeah. My face not, might not look like it, but inside it's just like, <laughs> it's like a smile. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, he smiles on you. Yeah. And that's kind of what I live for. Everybody, every son wants their dad to be proud of him. Yeah. Come on. So well, uh, that's kind of how it is. That's good. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Well, if you don't have any more questions, I'll sit down and close her out. Sorry. Well, that was great. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Man, every church, every church across the United States needs to hear yeah. that right there. That's there what's called discipleship training, making there disciples you go. And, and just giving them insights and tips on how to be a soul yeah. winner for Christ. The Bible says him that wins souls is wise. Yeah. Man, don't you want to be wise hey, and be able to have a reward <laughs> laid up in heaven, amen? And when you get to heaven, the Lord say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yeah. You've been faithful over a few things. He says, I'll make you ruler over many. Hey. Man, I, I, I really enjoy that. Right. Uh, you don't hear that a lot. No. And, and I, I hope we can uh, uh, get in touch with you and get you to help help us more one-on-one. -on -one and. Uh, Get some people to come down there to the flea market with you and you, and you yeah. just help us and get people comfortable with talking about the Lord to people. I'll tell you what, we, I'm, I'm not one to talk and make plans. I'll be there Saturday morning. All right, Saturday so morning. What time do you normally get there? Uh, I may have to go a little earlier this Saturday. I have plans around lunch. Okay. I, um, I've got to work this Saturday, but next Saturday, is it next Saturday too? No, see, I go every other Saturday yeah. because of my work schedule. Oh, okay. Mine and yours is by the time. It's opposite. The office. opposite. <laughs> yeah. Like that. And that's how it will be on everything. Okay. And we're twins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, some from the church would still like to go though and get up with you because I know it can be a scary thing, like you said, witnessing the people and you're afraid you're going to offend them. You don't know what they're going to say, you know, and people are worried about getting their toes yeah. stepped on or getting their feelings hurt, you know. But uh, if you do like you said and pray ahead of time and ask the Lord to give you that opportunity, he'll be working on the other end. And uh, I had that happen to me just uh, after the rehearsal. Uh, Tyler's Friday night. I headed uh, back towards the house and stopped at Hardy's. And my check engine light come on, and I just had this truck about three weeks. And I was like, "Oh Lord, yeah. what in the world could be wrong with this the truck?" Lord turned it on, boy. The Lord turned that check engine light on. <laughs> I thought, "Well, while I'm sitting here and 
advance is right here beside of me, I'll pull in there and have them run a code on it. So I pull in there and I went in and got this young guy and he come out there and we began to talk and uh, he told me about a wreck on 68 about that man that just got killed and uh, he, he knowed who he was and stuff and I got talking to him about the Lord and asked him if he'd been saved and he said yeah I actually got saved about five years ago and the Lord's been working on me he said I've not been in church and I'm like I should I broke my back in a car wreck and uh, he said I know the Lord's working on me and I, he said I, work schedule's been crazy he said I traded a, a day out on a Sunday and end up having to get two days to have to cover for him and he said I wasn't even supposed to be here tonight and I said yeah he was I said for me to come and just encourage you I said my check engine might just come on while I was sitting in Hardy's parking lot over here, and I thought, well, while I'm here, I'll just pull in here. And all it was was where the gas cap gets open, and it'll send a, a, a code, you know, for for uh, getting air or whatever. But he cleared it out. Amen. Something simple as that, though, just to get that opportunity to encourage him to get in church. And you know, with him just hearing about that guy dying, you know, in that car wreck, it just happened like 30 minutes prior to me being there, you know, I'm sure that's got him thinking, you know, yeah, right. and so we need to be in prayer for him, and uh, just how the Lord works, he's worked in a lot of different scenarios yeah. like that for me, and it makes it really easy to witness somebody when they're, they're just like, it's on their mind, and they're just ready for somebody to talk to them about yeah. it and give them some answers, so if we can, yeah. if we just be ready and be looking for that opportunity, it's there, like you said, and I really appreciate that, brother, and, and I'd like to get up with you more, I sure do. Has anyone else got anything tonight? If you would stand to your feet, Brother Butch, would you come and get a verse of invitation? <laughs>